Hey everybody and welcome to Emerald City Hockey. Now that the first round of the playoffs is in the books, we thought we'd take a look at some storylines that may impact the Kraken when it comes to the expansion draft this July. RJ, why don't you give us a start? Right, so one of the teams with the most exciting options in the expansion draft is the Colorado Avalanche, who made light work of the St. Louis Blues with a 4-0 sweep in the first round of the playoffs. But one development in that series that has people talking is the suspension of Nazem Kadri for his check to the head of Justin Falk in Game 2. And it was a bad hit. It was a clear headshot, and Kadri is a repeat offender with this sort of thing. He was suspended eight games for the hit, and it was a well-deserved suspension. So with Kadri taking himself out of meaningful playoff games yet again, uh, we've heard some chatter from Av circles about the possibility of maybe leaving him exposed in the expansion draft. And it's an interesting thought. As it is right now, we're projecting the Avs to go with the 7-3-1 protection option, which would leave defenseman Ryan Graves exposed. But what exposing Kadri would allow the Avs to do is choose the 8-skater protection option and protect Graves as that fourth defenseman. And then you get McKinnon, Rantanen, Burakovsky, and Landeskog being the protected forwards. Now, that would, of course, leave Kadri and potentially Tyson Jost exposed, and that kind of depends on what they decide to do with Gabriel Landeskog. Now, the Landeskog thing is another wrinkle in this whole situation. You know, are the Avs going to protect him? He's an upcoming UFA, and everyone knows he's going to resign with the Avs. But do they maybe wait until after the expansion draft? And is that the kind of thing the league might frown upon? So we'll have to wait and see on that. But it does leave the question, should the Avs expose Kadri? And if you're Ron Francis and he's available, would you take him over younger, cheaper options like maybe Connor Timmons or Logan O'Connor? Yeah, I mean, it's a tough situation. On the one hand, I would say, yes, absolutely, I think Seattle should take Kadri because he totally fixes that potential second-line center problem that we project them to have. Uh, I think Kadri is arguably one of the better guys you could find to put into that situation. Um, that said, you know, you can't have somebody who every time you're making the playoffs is going to go and get himself suspended for multiple rounds. Like it's pretty much like the most unacceptable on ice thing you can be doing at this point. So I, I'm a little on the fence, but I think, I think this suspension, the fact that he's going to miss so much time, I think this might be the catalyst for him to kind of change his ways when it comes to how he plays in the playoffs. And so I, I think it's worth the gamble for Seattle to take him. He's on a very manageable contract. It's only a four and a half million dollar per year cap hit, which is totally manageable for a second line center, especially someone who's going to be as good as him, both offensively and defensively. He's not, you know, he's he's a good two-way guy. So if I'm Ron Francis and he's exposed and you don't have the opportunity to take like a Ryan Graves, I go ahead and roll the dice on it. And, you know, if things aren't working out for you, you can trade him. He's going to have value. Yeah, I agree on Kadri. I think he could be worth the gamble there. And especially with some of the options being more unproven, if Graves is unavailable, I, I think he could be worth it, especially with that contract. He could have some trade value you know, if it doesn't work out that they could move on from him. Next, we have an interesting situation from the New York Islanders. The Islanders beat the Penguins in six games, and while the MVP for the Isles in that series was arguably Tristan Jari, Josh Bailey was also a major contributor. In our Islanders protection picture, Bailey's been on the outside looking in for a while now. He's one of those players who's still very useful right now, but that contract kind of gives you pause. And Ron Francis is going to have to ask himself, you know, do you take a shot on this player who can help you right away despite that contract? Bailey has a cap hit of $5 million a year until 2024, which is also scary because he's 31 years old. But in the first round against the Penguins, Bailey made a great case for why he might be worth it. He put up six points in seven games and led all Islanders forwards in ice time. He was really a difference maker in that series. So Dylan, right now we're picking Otto Koivula, who's really just a prospect from the Islanders. Does Bailey's play make you think twice about taking him? A little bit, but I don't think it was enough for me to say, like, yeah, we need to go grab Josh Bailey, be mostly because of that contract. You know, uh, Kadri, we, we talked about his contract, it makes a lot more sense because he's playing a more important position than Bailey does, right? He's playing center. Bailey's just a wing, and so to be paying $5 million for a wing who has never had a 20-goal season, that's just hard 
it's a hard pill to swallow for me. And so, yes, he was he's been good so far in the playoffs this year, but he hasn't exactly been this kind of game changing, dynamic, when things matter most guy in years past. So, I, I don't. I, this seems more like a fluke to me right now than anything. So. I think, yes, I would love to find someone better to be taking from the Islanders than who we have currently projected, but I just don't think Bailey's going to be that guy. Right, and I think when it comes to cost-effectiveness and what you're getting for that money, you can probably get something better elsewhere. So I'm still going to pass on Bailey. We'll see what he does in the next round, though. All right, RJ. Next up, we have someone from arguably the most surprising series of the first round, and that was the Minnesota Vegas series. And he's somebody you've talked about quite a bit. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about Cam Talbot? Right. Now, we've talked about Talbot in the past uh, when we covered expansion draft options for the Minnesota Wild. And at the time, I mentioned him as a goaltending option that I really liked for the Kraken. And in the series against Vegas, Talbot really showcased kind of everything that I talked about. He was solid positionally. He was a calming presence in net. And he flat out stole two games to the Wild in that series. And it was a big part of why they were able to surprise Vegas and take him to seven games. He had two shutouts, a 923 save percentage in the series. And he really frustrated the Golden Knights at times. And if Seattle decides to maybe take an asset from Montreal and not take Jake Allen or go a different direction with their goaltending picture, I do think Talbot could be the way to go as far as a veteran half of the goalie tandem. Yeah, I agree. I think especially if Jake Allen's not going to be there, I think you need someone who has a more veteran presence, has a little bit more experience. He's been around. A guy like Talbot, he's been on multiple teams. He's kind of seen a lot of different situations, and I think that would help any kind of goaltender who is going to be relied upon a lot by an expansion team. So yeah, I think this this series basically sold me on Cam Talbot being you know certainly part of a good tandem for the Kraken if they decide to go that route. Right. And moving on to another goalie, we have Chris Drieger of the Florida Panthers. So the Panthers played kind of goaltending musical chairs against the Lightning, and ultimately it didn't go very well for them. But it did provide some clarity on their goaltending situation. Spencer Knight came in and played the last two games for the Florida Panthers and did a good job in those games. And one of the things that means is that it kind of solidified the fact that Chris Drieger will not be part of the Florida Panthers next season. Trigger even posted an Instagram story the other day with the caption, quote, the end of an era, we'll miss you, Florida. So that kind of confirms what we already suspected about him leaving. But could he be on his way to Seattle? The Kraken are rumored to have interest in him, and all they'll need to do is present him with the most compelling contract offer since he is a UFA. We'll stay tuned on that situation and see if he could be part of a Kraken goalie tandem. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be another fantastic option that Seattle have available to them as far as goaltender goes. So, uh, you know, he was one of the reasons Florida was so exciting to watch earlier in the season for me. Um, yes, you know, Barkov has been fantastic. Ekblad looks fantastic all the time, and those guys are fun to watch. And, and everything they were really doing as a team was fun. But early in the season, the way he was holding down the fort and making those big saves when they needed him to, and they really did lean on him early in the season, it was exciting and it was fun. And that might be exactly something that Ron Francis wants to bring to the Kraken to kind of, you know, get fans excited early in the season while the team is still trying to figure everything out as they get used to playing with each other. Right. And if you take the Florida Panthers season as a whole, I, I think you can easily make the argument that Drieger was the best goalie on that team. And he was the biggest reason that they are where they were. And it was a talented goalie room with Sergei Bobrovsky and, and Spencer Knight there too. And Drieger really was kind of the number one. And even when Spencer Knight was starting games, Drieger was the backup, which says something about who they felt gave them the best chance to win. Yeah, for sure. All right, RJ, one of the other interesting series to watch was that Carolina-Nashville series. Now, Nashville put up more of a fight than I think a lot of us expected them to, though they still lost in the first round like we've been projecting all along. Um, but a couple guys caught your eye. Right, and one of the more interesting things for the Kraken to look at in that series is trying to get a read on someone who we had on our projected Kraken roster, and that's Ryan Johansson. So Johansson had three goals in the six games of the series and added an assist. So he made a pretty good case as to, you know, why he's someone that could be worth picking. You know, I, I did like what I saw from him, particularly the physicality that I hadn't seen much earlier in the season. He won board battles in the corners and went to the net a lot. 
but ultimately I felt that he didn't kind of create enough of that offense, you know, that was generated when he was on the ice. You know, yes, it's good that he went to the net, good that he kind of played along the boards, but I kind of felt that he was on the receiving end of that offense. He had a couple tap in goals and ultimately when you judge it with that contract, I still wouldn't take on that risk. What did you think of what you saw of Johansson, Dylan? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I was kind of surprised by the physicality that he showed, but I saw that as, you know, maybe he's trying to try, right? We've seen from him in the last couple seasons, he almost seems to coast, especially when it comes to the playoffs. That's kind of been Nashville's problem the last couple of years is him, Duchesne, they've had issues getting it going in the playoffs. So yes, were those dirty goals? Yeah, they were, but they're still goals. And he was putting himself in the position to get them in the first place. So I still think the Kraken are going to need someone who can center a first line for them potentially. And he still is like the only guy that makes sense when looking around the league. So I think he's shown enough that Seattle needs to give him the opportunity still, but that's just me. But you found some other guys you liked watching Nashville. Yes. And that's part of the reason that I'm not necessarily sold on Johansson as the pick is because there are a couple other guys that I was really impressed by. Uh, And the first one is someone who we haven't really covered yet. And that's Alexander Carrier. So Carrier, uh, he's a defenseman, and he averaged 25 minutes and 16 seconds of ice time per game. So there was a lot of overtime in that series, so that can kind of inflate those numbers. But he was fourth on the team in ice time. And in that series, you could kind of tell that they were really trusting him, like you know, one of their big boys on defense, you know, on that blue line that already has a lot of talent. Uh, and it looked like he belonged. He was moving the puck well. Uh, I liked some of the physicality in his own end. Uh, he's kind of surpassed some of these guys like Dante Fabro and uh, you know, Ben Harper on the depth chart. He's kind of moved his way up and he's really their number four now. And he probably could be exposed in the expansion draft. So he's someone Seattle would have to think about. What have you seen from Carrier? Yeah. I mean, he kind of, came out of nowhere for this playoff series for me kind of like I didn't pay a lot of attention to him all through the regular season because you you do you hear names like Dante Favreau and and you just think that's gonna be the guy right but he looked really good I just I have a hard time committing to him just because it's a small sample size and it's a playoff sample size and you know it's you never want to put too much weight into those, but at the same time, you have to weight it heavier than a regular season. So it, I'd, I'd want to see more from him. Maybe I can go look up some tape on him, but you know, we already kind of have Seattle having a pretty deep blue line. They're going to have a lot of options for guys that are kind of in that same like fourth defenseman on their team kind of role. So I don't know that they'd have to stretch to grab him versus you know missing out. If Nashville is going to be one of the only teams that they can get a potential first line center from, I think they have to pull the trigger on that. Mm -hmm. And if they do want to go forward, one more option that they have, and he's our current projected pick from the Predators, is Tanner Jeannot. So watching him in this series, you know, there wasn't a whole lot new. He kind of just did his thing, which is really what the herd line has done for the Predators this season. You know, they provide that energy, that physicality, some skill. And, you know, they can really turn the momentum of the game on its head when things aren't going well for the Preds. And I do think the Kraken could always use some of that. So I still like Jano, and I think he's still a projected pick. Yeah, for me, it's a little bit like the Carrier situation where it's like we already have the Kraken having access to a lot of these really good, like, you know, analytics guys, depth forwards that are really good at driving possession. So for me, he just kind of gets lumped in with, all those other guys, the Zach Aston Reese's, the uh, Abe Kubel's, right? So I, I just don't know that he, he's totally needed as our pick from Nashville. I, I still think, you know, Johansson, if he's available, and I don't know, even a Sissons, if he's available or something, I'd just rather have somebody with a little bit more experience and a little bit more skill, so to speak, and, and a little less reliance on just the pure um, driving of possession. Right. And as with a lot of these picks in the expansion draft, it'll just come down to, is the money worth it? Is Johansson worth that $8 million over the term? Is Sissons worth, I think it's 2.3 or whatever he is, you know, over that term? You know, we'll have to see. Yeah. 
So those are our thoughts on some players we think the Kraken should maybe take a longer look at after that first round. We'll do another one of these after the second round, but until then, please, if you can, like this video, leave a comment down below, let us know if you think we missed anybody or your thoughts on anybody we discussed here, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that next video. We'll see you next time.